Hello, welcome to part two of the introduction to proofs video on negations. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. This video continues from an earlier video. In the previous video, we looked at how do we negate for all statements and their exist statements, and we looked at them abstractly. In this video, we'll see some examples of how to do it concretely. So let's work with these two examples. I want you to negate these statements and then decide which is true, the original statement or the negation. The first statement is for all x in R, all real x, if x squared is greater than zero, then x is greater than zero. The second statement is there is a natural number n such that two to the n is greater than n squared. Take a moment to think about whether you think these are true or not, how you would prove that, and then write down their negations formally. All right, let's take a look at these. Let's start with the first one. For every real number, if x squared is greater than zero, then x is greater than zero. We're going to go through the negation of this formally. So we start with the negation, and if you're trying to negate a for all statement, it becomes a there exists statement where the property is negated. Put another way, you can think of it as pulling the negation in one layer. So we pull the negation in one layer, the for all becomes a there exists. Note that this is kind of an awkward thing to write, and we wouldn't really want to leave it like this. Also, it's worth mentioning why do we have these uh, triple equal signs? We use those uh, just to show that they're logically equivalent. So we use this as a stand-in for logically equivalent. You can use equal signs if you really want. Um, it's not a super big deal. Um, if someone was being pedantic, they might say that it should be logically equivalent and not equals. All right, let's continue on. Now we're all done with the quantifiers. Now we need to negate this statement right here. Now, at its core, what type of statement is this? It's an implication. How do you negate implications? Well, P implies Q. The negation is P and not Q. So there's the P part. This becomes and, not Q. Now we're almost done. We need to negate x greater than zero. What's the negation of that? Well, it's x less than or equal to zero. Now, let's think about whether we think this is true or not. Is it true that there exists a real number x where x squared is greater than zero and x itself is less than or equal to zero? Yes, the statement is true. Let's prove it. We're trying to prove a there exists statement, so our job is find or create or show an example of an x that works. I took x equals minus 5. That's a real number that's less than 0, um, and x squared is 25, which is greater than 0. I guess what we really care about is that it's less than or equal to 0, but I think you understand. Are there other proofs to the statement? Are there other x that work as counterexamples? Yes, basically any negative x will work. Now let's look at the second example. Our goal is to negate this existential statement. Take a moment to compute it if you haven't already. So one step at a time, we pull in the negation, and we negate the quantifier, and then we negate the statement inside. How do we negate a there exists? It becomes a for all. So this is for all natural numbers n. This part is uh, negated. And to negate this less than or equal to, sorry, greater or equal, to negate this greater than symbol, it becomes less than or equal to. And there we go. Now let's think about whether we think the statement is true or not. Is it true that 
For all natural numbers, 2 to the n is less than or equal to n squared. Or, to put it another way, let's look at the original statement. Is there a natural number where 2 to the n is greater than n squared? Well, the negation is false. This is, this is not true. And the original statement is true. If you're trying to prove this original statement, you need to show that something exists. So it's your job to find something. Here's an example of, that I came up with. Take n equals 1, which is a natural number. 2 to the n in this case is 2, which is greater than 1, which is 1 squared. Let's look at a third example. This one involves multiple quantifiers. Take a moment to negate this statement. Work slowly, one step at a time, pull the negation through one piece at a time. So I started with the uh, negation of the statement with the negation symbol outside. There should be an if and only if here. So this, if and only if this. I pulled the negation in one step. Then I pulled the negation in one more step. The for all becomes that there exists. And then we negate this part. Y is less than X. The negation is Y is greater or equal to X. So all of these are logically equivalent. And the way we did it was by pulling the negation symbol one through one step at a time. Again, there should be if and only ifs here. These are all logically equivalent. Now, is this true? Is it true that for every x, there is a y that could depend on the x that's bigger than the x? Yep, this is true. So let's prove this. How do we actually prove a statement like this? Well, at the outside, it's a for all statement. So we need to prove something about every x. Remember, if you're trying to prove something about every x, you can't just take an example. So we start off with take an x in the real numbers, and we won't assume anything about x other than it's a real number. The next part is an existential thing. It's our job to come up with an x. Sorry, come up with a y. And we can use anyone we want and it's allowed to depend on the x. So what's the y we're going to pick that's bigger than x? Well, let's take x plus 1. Finally, does it have the property? Yes. x plus 1 is greater or equal to x. So to zoom out a little bit again, when we're trying to prove this statement, we start off by letting x be arbitrary, letting it be any real number. We won't assume anything about x, like we won't, we won't assume anything about it, except that it's a real number. Then in the second part, we get to choose the y, and it can depend on the x. The following exercise is the end boss exercise. So negate the following statement. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that zero is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus two, which is less than Delta implies the absolute value of x squared minus 4 is less than epsilon. So you've probably seen this before. This is a calculus definition. And while it looks scary, you have all of the tools you need to conquer this. Just go slowly and work one step at a time. Also, you don't need to know any calculus to answer this problem. Let's end with some reflection. Do you prefer to negate state statements formally, using the process we described here, going one step at a time, or informally, by just thinking about it? Negate P1 and P2 and P3, where P1, P2, and P3 are just three mathematical statements. Once you've done this, answer the third question. How is De Morgan's Law related to universal and existential statements? Thank you very much and have a good day.